Hello viewers and welcome to a new episode of TTG Conversations, Five Questions video series. With us today is Uzaidi Udanis, who is the Chairman of Tourism Productivity Nexus. Tourism Productivity Nexus, set up in 2017, is supported by the Malaysia Productivity Corporation and is aimed at boosting productivity in the private sector involved in tourism while increasing innovation and growth opportunities. In his capacity as chairman, Uzaidi has been actively championing the upskilling and upscaling of inbound tourism players in order to increase their productivity level. Uzaidi, welcome to this program. Thank you. Thank you, Boenis. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. I have five questions for you today, Uzaidi. My first question, the process of improving productivity is inextricably, led, is inextricably tied to investments in innovation. But now with travel and tourism companies struggling to cut costs and staying afloat as long as possible during this drawn out crisis, how do you foresee travel and tourism stakeholders will approach their quest for productivity? Well, uh, thank you. Thank you for venues. Uh, first of all, I would like to express my thanks on behalf of the tourism industry, on behalf of Tourism Product Nexus. I would like to extend my thanks to uh, TTG for having this kind of uh, engagement, for this kind of uh, forum, which I think we need. We need to, uh, to have more and more uh, brainstorming, to have more uh, sessions, uh, sh uh, sharing sessions, so we'll be able to learn and to to, uh, to, 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 to be able to learn how to, uh, how to tackle this kind of uh, pandemic. You know, pandemic, this pandemic is actually uh, is, is, uh, is unique and is, uh, is very difficult for us to understand the actual impact. Uh, but with this, all our support of our friends, we'll be able to support each other and we hope that we'll be able to, you know, to sustain our business. Uh, Venice, I think productivity is, uh, happens when there is a uh, efficiency in uh, business operations and optimums of the uh, use of resources. Productivity means there are less costs and more income or more uh, what I call general income, more profit. So there with more profit and less income, that they goes to this. Uh, then uh, they goes to this productivity, uh, which you can improve productivity, which you can you know expand our productivity, which you, you know this kind of thing. So productivity happens when there is an efficiency in business operation and optimum use of resources, and technology uh, does catalyst uh, productivity and the, the adoption of the technology is very important. Uh, but it ne may not be a high cost. There might be a minimum cost. As you know, a lot of uh, free tools in the market, even, even that the one that we are using now, Zoom, there is option for us to, do, to, do, to use free, free options. So it may not be expensive, it may be free. And these apps can be used for the uh, tourism industry players to boost the productivity, to leverage this uh, platform for us to boost the productivity and again to increase our revenue. So my view, the key is not entirely to adapt the technology, but importantly, the willingness of by the industry players to unlearn, forget about what we learned before and relearn back what's good for them to continue their business operations during this crisis. It's very important to have this mind shift. If you can do that, whatever technology, whatever apps, whatever apps, whatever tools that be able to, uh, we can use it, is, 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 is useless. So we need to have a mind shift for us to willing to, to learn and to adapt and to make sure that, to make sure that uh, we unlearn and relearn what's good for them to continue the business operations during this pandemic. So the key is the willingness and the ability to be flexible and open to trends fitting the situations. I can foresee the tourism industry uh, players, first, and of, first of all, they will cut the cost operationally to stay afloat, to make sure that they stay afloat during this crisis. If they have so many staff, they would like to minimize the staff and minimize the usage of the resources in their business activities. They will need, they will need to learn to adapt the situation very quickly. Not only that, the industry players would like to have uh, 
you know, we need to have a to see a what you call not only the naked eyes but the long shots for the for them to see the opportunities every opportunity is possible from what the government has to offer just as the stimulus uh, packages incentive uh, the, for example the, the Malaysian government has has given a lot of uh, incentive through penjana so they require they, they it requires a lot of insights a lot of uh, uh long shot long you know a lot of uh, what do you call it minds mindset for us to take advantage of this uh, stimulus prevenis thank you zaidi you mentioned some apps that are available freely available in the market yeah to be able to expand further what are yeah. some things financially restrained companies can do to improve their productivity right now yeah well actually uh you know tourism industry they have a very wide range of uh, segment we have the bus operator we have travel agents we have dmc we have uh, incentive houses we have a uh, meeting uh, conference organizer There's plenty of uh, segment that we need to see is we have to see in the big picture uh, for example travel agents we know that uh, travel agent is a middleman for us to promote uh, whatever products whatever packages whatever destinations that uh, uh, they are they are uh, promoting it but they no longer no longer require this middleman so this middleman has to be relevant for them to be in the market example uh, domestic market a lot of our tourists domestic tourists they don't need travel agents why should i need uh, why should i book to travel agents they can just do booking through online uh, direct uh, uh, booking online to hotels or to OTA without using any travel agents so this uh, what do you call this this uh, development the travel agents need to see whether they are still relevant or not and if they are relevant how can they make maximize the productivity the trend now a lot of uh, companies even the big companies become segmented as to a smaller units even travel agents they don't need to have a, a proper setup a proper office a proper uh, staff accounts a finance uh, business developments or creative arts uh, whatever a uh, marketing if you look into a bigger picture all these talents can be outsourced and talents they do don't they don't require in one place you can source out these talents from any other place even graphic for example graphics if you have graph if you require graphics how to create a poster for your packages you can even outsource to even the to uh, to filipinos in philippines or to indonesians who has has a uh, i mean who has is who can offer a better cost better rates than locals example and accounts you can even have accountants in 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 thailand or those who are a commonwealth country that knows how how our our accounting system works it may not be full time stuff it can be outsourced so these are the things that we need to know we need to see and there's a lot, lot of tools to have it we have a lot of uh, they have a freelance uh, uh, platform we have uh, what they call they, they even have fever they have a fiber fiber the fiber so so many platform that we can use you can maximize even to the to the extent that marketing wise look everybody was against the mbmb yes but they have a huge number of database i can see that quite number of hotels local hotels even though we are protesting mbmb but they are in the, they are on board mbmb they even you know listed in the mbmb platform why because mbmb has a huge database and they only uh, deduct small percentage out of the sales compared to other ota uh, so these are these kind of things that we need to see look into different perspective look in the different in the bigger picture don't just say i want accounts i want audits aud auditor i want to have marketing uh, executive i want to have a general manager forget about it we are now in crisis see how it is and we can source out all this talent from all over the world not only malaysia from all over the world apibanis thank you zaidi this is a very good uh, view points that you have my third question to you zaidi 
one of the common resistance against productivity movements is the belief that it makes human resources obsolete. What are your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, Povenius, uh, this actually, uh, uh, what I call it, we, you know, we human being, as human being, we have this kind of phobia, uh, you know, and, and this phobia, we, we don't blame uh, the human beings, species. Uh, we have, you know, we, ha- we can see, we, can, we, ha- we have been uh, entertained by all these sky, uh, uh, science fiction movies, Star Wars, we even have a Terminator, uh, all kind of uh, science fictions, which, you know, implant our head that one day, one fine day, the machines will take over the human beings. But again, if you look into the different, different uh, side of coins, we can control. If we can control the machines, it will be much better. We don't have to be uh, afraid of this human being, uh, what, it call, what, what they call now AI, uh, artificial intelligence. But we can control. Let us control the AI. So how do we control AI? We, you, know, you know, the way that we uh, make sure that what is the outcome of AI and how can we uh, make sure that this AI helps our productivity level. So I feel that the more, uh, the more machine or the more robotic or the more uh, AI we use, we need a lot of high capital, high talents, people, high talented uh, human resources for us to see. There is no point for us to have a regular jobs from nine to five, which the machines can do. But we can do the decision making. We can make sure what is the uh, the the, uh, the what do you call it? the uh, the uh, what do you call it? the the the, the operation wise the how to to make, make, make uh, maximize the uh, output of it. These are the human beings uh, function, not just a regular routine. Even driver, bus driver. I I've been told that uh, in US or even in China they are testing now the bus uh, without driver. Can you imagine that in the next five years, there will be no driver for the bus, for our tour bus. It's just more routine and, and using all this uh, technology, 5G technology. So w- where are these people goes? Well, they are actually, uh, they, uh, they can control the machine. They can even have this uh, uh, decision making on these drivers. So I think we need to train uh, our, our next generations how to control these robotics this whatever AI and, and, and machines that I, I don't believe that human resources will be obsolete because of this uh, AI. Okay, right, Uzaidi. Mm-hmm. My fourth question to you, Uzaidi. What processes in tour, travel and tourism can be made more efficient while maintaining the high personal touch that hospitality also needs? Well, actually, this is a, a very big area, big, gen, big questions, uh, especially during this pandemic, uh, COVID-19. Uh, you know, two words, follow the SOP. At the moment now, we need, everybody needs to follow the SOP. That's the most, uh, the most important process in travel and tourism, which we can be more effective, which we can be more productive, and to maintain the high personal touch mm-hmm. on the hospitality and to, to, to maintain this uh, industry level. And, and, and as you know that a lot of SOP has been, uh, has been uh, drawn, has been uh, created, but industry players need to comply it. Uh, with this new normal, we need to follow this and still do the business. TPM's effort, you know, with the issued SOP, uh, we have developed uh, the adapt and adhere COVID-19 guidelines for tourism business. Uh, and, and this require a lot of uh, buy-in from the tourism players. Uh, for the past few few weeks or a couple of months, we can see that Malaysians are so eager to go out to have, holi- to have their own holiday. And you can see all the jetties are, f- you know, full of, uh, full of uh, people, full of tourists. Uh, domestic tourists and this, this, uh, they, they, and, and they can't control the social distance. They can't control the. Uh, so it require a, a proper SOP. Uh, we everybody so eager to do business during this time. If possible, we want to cover our losses since January. You know, uh, tourism industry is the first to hit. Was the first to hit, and it's going to be the last to float. Uh, compared to retail, compared to restaurants, everything. 
So they are so eager when they they, they, they can see the there's a demand for domestic tourists. Uh, you know, they they say okay, maximize it. The bus maximize the seats. You, you know, uh, we, uh, even though we don't have to comply the seats, uh, we don't have to comply the social distance. Uh, even you can see a lot of destinations uh, the fly, uh, on the flights. Uh, when 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 we you know when we register the tickets, when we register the, the I mean we register when we check in, there's a SOP, yeah, social distance. When we queue to the fly uh, to the aircraft, yeah, yeah, there is there is a social social distance. But when we are in in the flights on <laughs> on board. You can see we are sitting next to each other, uh, very tightly. It's, there's no social distance, so I, I'm not so sure how how can we uh, comply all the social distance without compromising 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 this all this uh, uh, business uh, profitability. So it requires what your question is the process. What process the travel tourism can be made more efficient? We need to follow the SOP for us to maintain our our business to make sure that our business are surviving now. Can survive, can survive through this pandemic, uh, Puvanis. My last question to you, Zaidi. <laughs> what resources are there available for companies to upskill staff to improve their productivity, but may lack the finances or know-how in terms of how to get started? Well, Puvanis, thank you for the question. I think, uh, I think that this is an uh, obvious question. So, you know, we are so fortunate to have this uh, the government's uh, initiative. A lot of government initiative. Uh, I just I just uh, had a meeting with uh, this Kementerian uh, uh, Sumber Asli that is uh, in charge of Frim, in charge of the uh, the national park. They have you know they have a lot of uh, uh, allocation for trainings. Uh, last week, I had a discussion with the uh, Ministry of uh, Entrepreneurs. They also have a lot of uh, funds for trainings uh, for the for the entrepreneurs to upskill to upskill their knowledge and also skill. And and even more more tech himself have a lot of uh, options for us to upskill, especially for tour guides. So we are so lucky. Uh, we are so lucky that the uh, Malaysian government is is so emphasizing on the tourism industry. In fact, yesterday I had a discussion with the uh, Chief Minister of Malacca, which they, they want to make sure that uh, all our tour guides are high, uh, high skill uh, talents and travel agents are promoting uh, high ends, not just cheap 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 package, uh, cheap holiday package, but high end. To end, but this high end require uh, a lot of. Uh, a lot of skills for for us to fulfill the high end. Uh, they may have a very fussy uh, requirement demands, but uh, we need to fulfill all these fussy requirement. So the skill, the training is very important. I think this, all the states uh, Malaysia, in Malaysia has this kind of uh, initiative. Even MPC, uh, look at this uh, Malaysian Productivity Corporation, is the the leading agency uh, for productivity, uh, not only the, for tourism industry but also across the industry. So they have so many initiatives uh, to to make sure that the entrepreneurs, uh, especially the tourism industry, survive and to upskill their knowledge during this pandemic. Venice, thank you. That's all the questions we have for you today, Uzaibri. <laughs> thank you so much for your time. Viewers, if there are topics you'd like us to tackle, please tell us in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>